Hello everyone and welcome to Hill Street. Today's story is Peter Squid Billy by Blake Blizzard. If you end up enjoying this story, please leave a like. And if you enjoy hearing stories from me, please subscribe and become a resident of Hill Street and let me know how I'm doing in the comments. Now, let's get to this nightmare. My name is Peter Squid Billy. Odd name, I'll give you that. Even odder is that a grown man north of 40 goes by a nickname. I prefer it, honestly. I not only make my friends and family call me Squid, I also instruct my 100 or so colleagues above and beneath me to call me that as well. My real name is Peter William. I know, I'm one of those shifty people with the two first names. Can't trust them, right? Also, if you have paid attention to the first sentence of this paragraph, then you're furrowing your eyebrows, maybe even lifting one, and scratching behind your left ear in inquiry. I said my name is Peter Squid Billy. Turns out my real name is actually Peter William. You probably don't know many people with the last name Billy. To easily explain this one, I'll just say that growing up, I hated my first name. And I hated William. When I was about seven or eight, I found out that some grown-ups called William have the option to be called Billy. What a revelation. I was also into Old West Outlaws, like most boys my age, and came across the legendary American train robber and vigilante, Billy the Kid. What a combo. At such an impressionable age, I started signing my name, Peter Billy. I introduced myself as such to my new class every school year, despite what was on the official roster. The name stuck to this day. Oh yes, the squid part. A unique name for a unique child. The short story is that when I was in the third or fourth grade, I was playing with a black pen. I must have been trying to dissemble it, like a Tommy gun or something, and the ink exploded all over my newly acquired Michigan Wolverine jersey I got for Christmas. It was short time college football phenom, Tim Biakabatuka. He wore the number 21. Doesn't sound like something too out of the ordinary for a child to wear, but it was their away jersey, if you can remember correctly, which means it was white. The black ink plastered the front of my chest like a Jackson Pollock painting. Hey, you're a squid or something, one of my classmates yelled. That was all it took. I was mortified at the time, of course. I knew I had to embrace it to keep the hurt down. I've been known as squid ever since. I couldn't imagine not being squid now. I love it. I hardly answer when someone calls me Pete or Billy, or Mr. William. I'm squid. Fast forward to present day. I spend most of my days and nights in my corner office on the 10th floor of the Peterson Group building. 10 floors of controlling people's financial future. We are not a well-known company like that of the shopping site or the search engine we all depend on. We do, however know how to make money for our clients. I can't go further than that, just because it's too hard to explain. I will say that recently we got ahead of the pack in the crypto world, an idea that a few of us agreed could be major. Could we have been more correct? Oh, and we also bought one of the first NFTs around, boosting that scam into the stratosphere. Did I say scam? I mean investment. I'm the CTO of this company, the chief tech officer. Basically, I'm the second in command. It's just a fancy term for social media manager, really. The boy in the ink-stained Wolverine jersey was always ahead of the crowd when the internet surfaced. Not only did I get it, but I also dove straight in. I learned code. I made my own websites. I dominated the early days of e-trading, 
Which brings me here today, sitting in a nice leather chair, looking outside from over a hundred feet in the air. My life isn't great. It's not bad either. I have no kids, no partner. I've dated and had a few serious relationships, but nothing committal. Things just didn't work in that department. I'm not one of those married to work guys. I just really do enjoy my job. I have a lot of freedom in that, which allows me to work whenever I want. A relationship can get in the way when I have an idea and need to flip my surface or laptop open. No one likes that when you're in the middle of watching a movie together. Sorry, I've rambled enough. I'm just excited to add this experience to my daily, monthly experience. It's a journal I've been keeping for a while. I read some billionaire keeps a journal of their best experiences to help them see an in ink when they need reminding of what brought them to their success. I'm writing this with a real pen. A black pen. Hopefully it stays contained inside the hard plastic bit container. Last night, I was sitting at my desk, like most nights. I'm fortunate enough to have my own bathroom, which is such a plus. After finally deciding to power down my computers for the night, I decided to wash my face and take a pee in my bathroom. Not sure which order I performed that in. Either way, I shut the water off to the sink, flushed the toilet, and lost my vision. I was sitting in the complete darkness. I could not see my own hand in front of my face. I was not physically blind, thank the Lord. The power had gone out. I felt my way to the bathroom door, hoping that I would at least see the exit sign that always had power to it. By way of some kind of emergency regulated generator, nothing. The building had lost power before, but never more than a few seconds. We are situated in a part of the US that doesn't have threatening weather or temps that would affect our electricity. As I was standing as still as a statue, feeling like a real craphead, I saw something black dripping from one of the air ducts. Yes, I know. It was pitch black. I don't understand if the area I was looking at was illuminated, or the lights had come on without me realizing it, or what. I truly believe what I saw was blacker than the darkness I was covered in. Being scared does not begin to convey how terrified I was. I was transfixed on the multiple strands of black goo coming from the vent above me. I heard a voice, more like a cough. A clearing of the throat, maybe. Nervously, I worked up the fortitude to say something, announce my presence. Hello? I said with a weak little voice. A ghostly moan responded. A dark, deep voice bored inside my head. It felt like my eyes were going to shake outside of their sockets. Squid, I think it said. This couldn't be happening. I finally worked too much. I was seeing and hearing things due to overwhelming self-inducted stress. After a moment, I bravely stood my mental ground. Who are you? What do you want? I put on my manliest front. No reply at first. Then after a few terrifying seconds, it responded. Hello, Peter. I attempted to calmly reply to it this time. Look, I don't believe in ghosts or ghouls or ghasts. So who are you? What are you? I know it sounds strange, but I felt like it was thinking. I'm not here to scare you. I think you invited me. The lights came back on, although not as bright as normal. I could at least see. The familiar office space was once again visible. I slowly made my way back to my leather chair. I cautiously sat down and attempted to regain my composure. I did not see the black sludge. I didn't see a person or any kind of entity, but I 
felt it. Okay, what is your name? I heard what I perceived as a human voice saying, Um, and then silence. The entity spoke again, this time as clear as a summer day in the Bahamas. You can call me Jim. Jim? I said, quizzically. Um, yes, you can call me Jim. No one's asked me my name before. I think I like Jim. For some reason, I was more relaxed now. Jim disarmed me with his joy at naming himself. Okay, Jim, what do you want? This was my first attempt at communicating with another world. A world I had no idea ever existed. I'm here to help, Pete. Or should I call you Squid? This thing knew my avatar, so that was an alarming start. It said that this spirit, demonic or not, knew exactly who I was. What do you want to help me with then, Jim? I was way outside my comfort zone with this conversation. A few low clicking sounds, and then it spoke again. I know you are looking for more, even though you are a seemingly complete soul. You want more, but you don't know what. I look around my office, a dozen awards for nothing. Meaningless cheap plastic statues given to me for meaningless achievements. I can't even remember one of those occasions that I've been acknowledged for. I still could not see anyone. As I said though, I did feel it. Jim was with me in my office. It felt like he was sitting in his own little invisible chair, knee to knee with me. At that moment, a faint dark mist materialized around me. It took no form. The word ether was flashing inside my brain. A low rumble indicated that Jim was about to speak again. Yes, I allowed you to see me for a brief moment to show you that I do have somewhat of a physical form, which you humans appreciate. What's the phrase? Seeing is believing. I sat quietly. Right. On to business. I don't come to your realm often. Do you agree you are missing something, Squid? Of course, we all are, I said, feeling an immediate rush of sadness. You sit here, surrounded by achievements. You are financially set forever. Yet, your dreams are all dead and buried. Do you know what happened to you? I felt something that has not happened to me in the better part of a decade. My lower lip started to move involuntarily. Vapors felt like they would escape from the corner of my eyes. Okay, okay. No need for that, Squid. I'll get to the end. Agree to let me in, and I guarantee you will find what you've been missing. I straightened up, loosened my tie, and leaned into where I imagined Jim would be. I'm in. The ether started swirling about me in a violent pace. My office now turned red. Say, you agree, Jim said with much more bass in his voice this time. I stood now, kicking my chair to the ground in the process. I bet I looked silly. Jim had truly whipped his energy into a small tornado. It almost threw me face down into the floor. My attempt to bravely stand up to Jim turned out to make me look and feel weaker than ever. Say it, Squid. I, I agree. I was dropped on the floor of my office. I was in so much pain, I did not realize I was levitating from Jim's force. I grabbed my glasses which were ripped off my face. I felt no more entity or ether in my office. Sensing this, I'm sure, Jim appeared in front of me, an awful shadow version of a human, too small, 
white eyes glowing where the head should be. He floated within six inches of my face. Three tendrils creeped underneath my nose. Good. When I opened my eyes, I was in my bed. My bed, snug as a bug in a rug. It wasn't until I brushed my teeth and opened the newspaper that I remembered what happened last night. Yes, I still read print. I laughed to myself, thinking I need a vacation. Clearly, I had some kind of mental breakdown due to the stress of work. Hey Jim, are you watching me right now, you sicko? No response, as I anticipated. I think I'll take a walk to the corner store, get a little snack and coffee. After I grabbed a grande mocha frop, I toured the candy aisle. I never make my way here. I've been on that keto kick for a while now. Today felt like a good day for a break. Ah, Reese's Cups, my childhood favorite. Take it. I spun around to see who the hell just spoke to me. A ghost, apparently. Still dealing with that adrenaline dump from last night. Oh no, Squid. I'm here. And very real. No, I muttered. Yup, I'll be with you for a time, old Petey boy. Take the candy. Take the candy and walk out the door. What? And not pay? It's like a buck fifty. I'm not going to steal a Reese's, man. If you could feel a little demon in your mind smile, well, that would be a weird thing to feel. I did, though. For absolutely no reason, I stared at that peanut butter cup, now like it was going to change the rest of my life. I reached for it, hesitated, and stared again. Now, I'm walking out of the store with an unpaid package of candy in my sweatshirt pocket. I've never stolen a thing in my life. I'm not a thief. I felt so... okay. I felt better than okay. I was on fire. If I had a health bar, represented by little hearts like Zelda, let's say three out of the five hearts were gone. I know there's probably more in the game. I haven't played it since I was six, so don't blow me up, okay? Follow me on the analogy. I have five hearts. Two are gone. When I stole that candy, one entire heart filled back up. You get me? Sitting at home now, staring at my looted prize, I just kind of smiled. I don't know what I'm feeling, but I know that something has changed. Yes, child. You wanted a change, right? Oh crap, him again. That was just step one, Squid. I think you're going to enjoy this new life of yours. Full of purpose, full of excitement. Do as I say, and I will not disappoint you. By the time Jim ended his mini monologue, I had finished scarfing both peanut butter cups. It's been about six weeks since I became an adult kleptomanic. I mean that sarcastically, of course. I have no other urges to steal dollar candy, nor have I had Jim in my head pushing me to do so. Jim hasn't been here at all. I've come to accept it. I think it's for the best. Standing in the subway, waiting for the 115 to uptown, I feel the familiar power brush by me. I know what it is immediately. Hello, Jim, I said through gritted teeth. Oh, come on, old boy. Don't be like that. This is customary. I'll give you an idea of what I do, then I'll let you go back to your reality. Rolling my eyes out of my head, I stood up to face my abandoned spirit friend. So... What will it be then, Jim? Maybe you want me to steal a newspaper or something. I could feel Jim's energy change. You see that guy over there? When he said that, 
I felt a subtle breeze move across my face, like a hand was attempting to move my head in a certain direction. As I moved my gaze, I saw a person. It was just me and him down here. This time of day isn't that busy, but there's usually more than two people. Yeah, that's him. Hey, you want to push him on the train tracks? What? Screw you, man. Not a chance. I'm not a murderer. The man looked at me. I forget that I'm arguing with thin air to everyone else. As soon as he made eye contact with me, he quickly went to minding his own business. Jim stepped back into my brain. Maybe the train will be early. Maybe it will be late. Maybe he'll make it off the tracks in time. You don't know, Squid. That's the fun of it. Haven't we been over this before? Push him. No. Do it, or you will not be happy. I started to make my way over to the stranger. I attempted to be non-conspicuous, but kind of hard when there's no crowd. I stopped when I was about ten feet away. You do it, I said. I expected another cosmic response about how I was supposed to be fulfilled by acts of random badness, but instead, I quickly heard only five words. I thought you'd never ask. Without a second to process, I saw the man get yanked off the platform to the tracks below. I could physically see his brown jacket go up behind his neck like someone was pulling it and then his arms and legs whipped behind his torso like he was pushed in the back with major force. I watched the soon-to-be corpse scrounge to his hands and knees, eyes wide as a dinner plate. Don't help him. I was mid-stride and stopped. He's right. This is all happening for some reason, a reason I cannot pretend to know. The man got to his feet. The familiar foghorn echoed through the steel and concrete tunnel. The massive headlight bended its fiery face. This only made the man more panicked. He met eyes with me. At that moment, I didn't feel sorrow or shame. I felt pity. Pity for a man that had no purpose in life. He should be there. He scrambled for the platform like his pants were full of ants. Ants in the pants. Let's go, Squid. Jim puffed in my ear. I was already on my way. Decided to cancel my 115, I started walking up towards the street level. Take one more look. As I did, I saw the man pulled himself to safety. Sirens were sounding in the distance. Crap. Didn't think that the surveillance cameras are all over the place down there. Ah, no matter. I technically didn't do anything wrong. You can't charge me for not helping. I was afraid. The tracks are charged death traps. I didn't want to fall myself. Etc, etc. Sorry. It's been a while. It's been almost a year since I checked in with my journal. Jim and I have been besties. Not sure some of the things I've done should be repeated. Don't get me wrong though, I loved every second of it. Jim has let me do things as small as slap a little kid's hat off, to as big as scamming some helpless grandma out of the little bit of life savings she had. Thanks for the subscription to Log Cabin Monthly. Jim was always right. I had a great life up to the point he had met me, but I was missing something. Something I couldn't put my finger on. I think I'll enjoy a drink of my own creation. One part Jack Daniel's fire, one part Jim Beam Peach, and one part Butterscotch Schnapps. I call it Sunday Fun Day. You can have it any day you like. Sip on one. Then take a shower. There's no better way to end a day, in my opinion. As I wake the next day, I feel great. 
I throw on my favorite at-home loungewear, gray champion sweatshirt and pants. I see the empty glass of Sunday Funday and smile. Should I keep the buzz going? No, let's have a tall bottle of ice cold water and wait for Jim to tell me what's next. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. Ah, Jim, I say to the ether, what do you have for me today? The lights flickered for a few seconds. Nothing, Squid. I laugh. Come on, man. I know you better than that. The mood lowers. We're done, Squid. You've reached the end of the line. A little rose filled with panic starts to bubble in my gut. Okay, stop messing around. What are we getting into? I'm not playing around. An audible laugh burst through my eardrums. <laughs> I was never playing around, Peter. The sweat beads on my forehead. Actually, I'm sweating all over. The sweatshirt seems like an intended choice. The specter that I've called Jim appears in front of me. Sit. At once, I'm thrown down into my dining room chair. Another chair comes flying towards me, stopping inches away. The black mist in the form of a human sits down in front of me, staring at me, knees to knees, face to face. I'm leaving you, Peter. You will be slung back into the life you knew before me. I'm sure he picked up on the confusion on my face. It was fun, but you deserve to go back to your life as a sad, no purpose having meat bag. I'm having trouble breathing. I, I, I don't understand. I did everything you asked. I did awful things for you. I thought this was what I was supposed to do. Another crackle escapes the shadow person in front of me. <laughs> this was always going to happen. You were supposed to change. Adapt. See how crappy of a person you were. Instead, you embraced it. I was only there to push you, hoping you would go the way I wanted, and you did. Sorry, you were an insignificant pawn in this ethereal game. I tried to speak, but nothing was coming out. Think about it, Peter. The only thing you've hung on to your entire pathetic life is that stupid nickname. You never made a difference. You never helped anyone. You didn't hold doors open for anyone. You scammed people out of their hard-earned money. You sold them terrible investments. You even took a little off the top. Your boss has just found out the extent of your theft. Even worse, you regularly litter. My blood went cold. Sorry, Pete. I know. This is not how you thought this was going. I hoped it wouldn't go this way either. But here we are. It's been a pleasure if that makes you feel any better. I always get high marks when my subjects don't bend. Best of luck to you. You're on your own again. Don't think you'll quite enjoy where it's going. Ta-ta. Wait, wait. I screamed for the only time I saw Jim's face. Well, what looked like a face. It was mangled, glistening, and red. And like a campfire douses in water, it was gone. Silence. I wish the world would just explode. I had nothing to live for. I never considered this was a chance to change. I took the path far too traveled. This squid had been cooked.